Well, as you can see, I'm making a kite. And on this kite, I'm using a polyfilm. I spritz the glass with water, spread the polyfilm out, got as many of the bubbles and wrinkles out as I could. And then I drew around my template with a broad marker so that you could see it. And I marked the spine and the wingtip line also. I installed the spine. I used contact cement on the back side of the spine. Installed it while the cement was wet. And you can see here where some of the glue kind of wrinkled up the uh, sail behind it, which is a typical reaction of these polyfilms with contact cement. It often will wrinkle a little bit. Sometimes it will release as the glue dries. Sometimes it won't. But I'm not worried about that. <laughs> I installed my uh, reinforcement for the nose here. This is a piece of mylar that I cut. It has double-sided tape on the back and the tape is colored so that you can see it. And I just shaped it so that when the bow is in, it is going, the bow is going to be on top. On top of the uh, reinforcement. To give the reinforcement a little bit more strength here. In actually doing this job. These little yellow things here are what I use for my bridle. They're just pieces of heat shrink tubing I put on here, loose. I will glue them in place with super glue once the kite is complete. I don't super glue my bridle to the bow. I super glue these little pieces and use them as stops so that when I do tie my bridle, they, they push up against the edge of this and stay there, but they're able to rotate if they need to. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but that's what I do. So now I'm going to install the bow and I'm going to do it with the same way I did with the spine. I'm going to wet glue it. I'm going to use contact cement, the regular old Weldwood contact cement I've been using for years, and I'm going to coat the entire circumference of this portion of the bow on both sides. And then I'm just going to install it. And the reason I do it this way is because it seems to work really well at bonding and the other thing is when the bow is in here like this it is free to rotate around its own axis and carbon fiber rods are not in any way round they look round they feel pretty round but they aren't and because of that you need to make sure that the rod you're using for the bow is in its naturally uh, good place in terms of the way that the outer roundness forces it to be in this spot. You don't want it to be distorted. And that's why I do it that way. If you use bamboo for a bow, you don't have that problem because you control the bamboo uh, tension with the uh, shape, shaping of it. So I'm just going to use this little brush that's in the bottle. It's uh, pretty crude, but I'm just gonna rotate the rod here and Spread the glue on both sides. I'm 
Remember, didn't want to get the glue on the kite itself, but sometimes it happens. So there I have the wet glue on the bow. And I will wet, I will try to wipe this off. So now, I'm simply going to install it. I put it in the notches of the bow setter by bending it and holding it where my glue is not. That way I don't get my fingers all caught up in the glue. That was bad anyway. And because the spine is here, I'm going to hold the bow setter down to make sure that it is uh, aligned correctly. Now I'm going to use my wax paper and just push down, straight down, onto the glued portion of the bow. Well, that can happen. And obviously it did. Popped right out of the bow setter because I have the spine in there first. Now, if I didn't, that would never have had happened. So now, now let this dry. Well, the glue is dried and I removed my bow setter and I'm now in the process of hot cutting the sail away from the rest of the material. I'm using this portable soldering iron as a hot cutter and I'm going to use a ruler to guide me on the straight sections and on the curved sections, I will just freehand it. It's not that difficult to do. And as precise as I can get it, I will attempt, just going to cut this away here to see if I've cut through the material. Sometimes the hot cutter will not cut all the way through to the glass. It will leave some uncut sections, so I just want to check that. Now I'm going to cut the trailing edges the same way using the ruler. Freehand and going around a carbon rod like this, I do not want to touch the hot cutter, the tip of it, to the carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is very sensitive to high temperature to heat and it weakens it considerably when it gets touched by it. So try to avoid that if you can. What I do is I use a stick. Could be anything, really, but I use a piece of this as a guide to keep my soldering pencil away from the bow, but I just follow the bow with the stick, and then I use this as my guide. That does two things. It prevents the bow from being touched by the hot cutter and it also provides a very, very small hem area that is yet to be glued. And that is a good way to 
create a small hem. Here I'll use the ruler again. Uh, I'm going to put battens on this kite, but I'm going to do that after I remove it from the glass. So removing it from the glass I'll do after I apply glue to this little tiny hem area and for that I'm going to use a syringe that has contact cement in it and it has a flexible really tiny tip and that allows me to put a very very fine amount of glue right along the outside edge where the hem will go. And when I'm finished with that, applying the glue, I will use wax paper and just roll that up over the top of the bow and let it dry. 